Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, I'm going to show you how to install, launch and use PyCharm ID. This PyCharm ID is an editor guys, where you are going to write your Selenium Python automation scripts. In the previous session, I have shown you how to download, install and configure Python in a practical way. After that is done, we are going to do this second step. Okay, that is we are going to install, launch and use PyCharm ID where we are going to get started with installation of PyCharm ID now. Okay, so how to install PyCharm ID editor for writing our Selenium Python automation scripts. Fine. So for that, just open any Chrome browser and search for only two words that is download, paste, whatever that you want to download, you just mention that PyCharm ID, okay? Download PyCharm ID, that's it. Just press enter, we'll get the link. From jetbrains.com, you have this PyCharm ID and the downloads page will be directly taken here. Click on that. And here, when you went to this download page of this uh, PyCharm ID editor, okay, there are three operating systems that are displayed here. There is one is Windows, next one is Mac, and third one is Linux. Since I am using Windows machine, I'll stick with Windows. Under Windows, again, we have professional and community. I want to go with the community because it's kind of free guys. Okay. I don't have to pay any amount license amount for using the community edition. You see free built on open source. So here, if I go with the community, I don't have to pay any license. So if I, if I have to go with professional, I have to pay license. Uh, otherwise I'll get only 30 day free trial guys. Okay. After that, uh, I'll not be able to use this editor anymore. So maybe in companies, uh, depending on the requirement, they may go with professional, but, uh, for our practice and learning purpose of Selenium Python, this community edition is more than enough, guys. Okay. This one community edition is more than enough for now. Okay. So let's stick to the community version, which is a free and open source version of uh, PyCharm ID. Just click on this download button. In a while, you will see the download will start. You see, the download has already started for PyCharm ID community edition. Let's wait for the download to finish up. As you can see, this PyCharm. ID of community edition has been now successfully downloaded. Let's go to the location where it got downloaded. And this is the location guys. Okay. So PyCharm community, just double click on this. In a while, we'll get an installation wizard. I got a user access control dialog. I'm selecting yes. And now I got the installation wizard of this PyCharm ID. I'm just selecting next. And this is the location where the PyCharm ID is going to get installed. That is C, Program Files, JetBrains. So let's go to this location once and see if there is anything there already. C, Program Files. C, Program Files. Then what's the other one? JetBrains, right? You see there is no JetBrains here. Okay, that is going to get created now. Okay, that is going to get created now. And uh, under the JetBrains folder, uh, this PyCharm community edition also is going to get created. Okay, click on next. Uh, and don't select anything. I don't think I need anything. Okay, I can simply search for the PyCharm ID and launch it later. So I don't even have to create a shortcut. If you're interested in creating a desktop shortcut, you can select this. Otherwise, not required. Click on next. Click on install. After installation, let's go to the same location and see whether we have the Jets parents folder and under that PyCharm community edition thing is there or not. Let's see that. Let's wait for the installation to be done. So we are almost there. The installation is completed. Uh, I don't want to launch it right away or you can even select this to launch right away. I'll show you a permanent way of launching it. Okay without, uh, you know, e easiest way I can say. I'll just not select this one. If you're interested, you can select this, but I'm not going to select. I'll say finish. And to launch that PyCharm ID just now, which I have downloaded and installed, I'll simply click on the search in Windows and search for that uh, PyCharm. Search for PyCharm, that's it, okay, PyCharm. The moment I say PyCharm, you see app is coming, right? PyCharm Community Edition app is coming. Click on this, select that. The PyCharm ID will launch now. So earlier also in my machine, guys, the Py old PyCharm ID was there. Okay. Now I have, uh, before installing this, I want to install this and install this. So that's why it's asking me this dialogue. Most of the people, if you are doing it for the first time, you may not get this dialogue, guys. Okay. 
when installing the PyCharm ID for the first time, you may not get this dialog. But earlier, if you have uninstalled the PyCharm ID and now installing again, you may get this kind of dialog. I'll simply say do not import. I want to start fresh. So I'll simply say do not import settings. Okay. Say okay, that's it. The PyCharm ID will launch. Let's wait for the PyCharm ID to launch. So here installing, we are now launching the PyCharm ID guys as part of the second step of this uh, session. We have launched PyCharm ID and how to use the PyCharm ID after launching this PyCharm ID, how to use the PyCharm ID. For that, when you get this kind of dialogue guys, okay, you can create a new project here, you see. Projects uh, option is selected here and you have this new project. Select that new project. You see, by default, Python project is the name of this project, guys. I can give my own name here. Okay. As a sample project. Yeah, I'm just giving some name like sample project here. Okay. So, otherwise, I'll simply cancel and say new project. And uh, you see, uh, see, sample project is coming. That's okay. So, this is the name of the project I have given, guys. Okay. Sample project is the name of the project I have given. And, uh, Okay, let's now click on create. Okay, just change the name here. Okay, whatever the default name is there, update that with the whatever the name you want to give for this project and click on create, guys. Okay, in simple terms, the project will be created. It's loading the sample project. I'll let me maximize this. Okay, so that we can access. It's progressing, so I'm not able to select this one. Let it complete creating virtual. Some options are coming here. Let's wait until it uh, gets ready. Okay. It will take some time for this to get ready. Internally, it will create some virtual environment and all those stuff. Let's wait. Here you can see that sample project already got created, guys. You can expand that if you want. Uh, I'm not able to select this because this loading process is going on. You see here some scanning files to index all those coming. Let's wait for this progress to complete also. So it will take a while, you know, let me now maximize. No, it's maximizing. That's okay. Here, always download option is coming. Just select always download. Okay. For the first time, you may get some kind of dialects and all. Just select whatever I am showing here. It's scanning files to index. Let it complete the progress, guys. Okay. And the project is sample project. Uh, I have expanded that here. Now it got expanded. Under that, we got some default file. That is, you know, main.py file. A sample Python file came with some... Uh, default code is coming has come okay so i have not written this code it came by default okay let me clear this code so let's wait for the scanning files to index complete so let's still wait okay it's still going on now it's indexing some in, in uh, dependencies and all indexing python something let's wait all the progress uh, should complete here guys okay show show all to this need to be completed guys. otherwise you know i cannot proceed with whatever i wanted to with this editor as you can see all the process have been completed now let's write some sample code here uh, it can be as simple as the python code okay so i'll in from python i'll be writing a print statement and inside this print i'll just be writing my name let's say motori so the font may be a bit less guys right you see the font may be less so what I will do here is I will increase the font here. The best way to increase a font is I'll go to file. Then I need to go to settings. Okay. Yeah, appearance, appearance and behavior is there. Uh, editor is there. There's one more option like editor. Expand the editor. Uh, let's go to general. Okay, under under editor, there is something known as general. And under that general, we have mouse control. Change font size with control plus mouse wheel in. Select this option, guys. Okay. Say apply. And only active editor should be selected here. Say okay. Now this main.py, this box is active editor now. Now if I press control key and scroll up my mouse, you see, scroll up, scroll down my mouse. Okay. Based on that, the font is say changing. So uh, whatever the active window is there, there, not only this editor window, but also here in the console or whatever it is, you can do the same thing as I'll show you in a while. Now this font is uh, enough, I feel. Okay, this is more than enough. Run this script, right click on this and say run this Python file and see whether this code is running or not in PyCharm ID. You see, 
the arun motri got printed in the output if i want to increase this font again the same thing guys this is now the active window control and scroll up more scroll up you'll get this okay so like this you can change so guys uh, whatever the program have written and executed the result got displayed in the output console here fine so this is how we need to uh, use pycharm id okay so these two to uh, topics are done as part of Selenium web driver. The first two topics like downloading, installing, and configuring Python. And second one is installing, launching, and using PyCharm ID. Now, in the next session, I'm going to show you how to install Selenium for Python. Okay, till now we were only using this PyCharm ID for writing the Python code and running them. But now, how to run the Selenium code from this PyCharm ID is something I'm going to cover in the next session. Till then, see you. Bye bye.